Shut up and sit down. World-class cannabis seeds. Available online or in stores. Oh my god, I just farted. We're going with it. Yo, what up OGs? Grow420 Guide here, and welcome back to G420G Marathon. I know it was supposed to be the harvest vlog today, but we're outdoors and we're going to be updating you guys on our auto flower project. It is currently 21 days in. And yeah, we're out here to actually take our picture for our time lapse, but I decided, you know what? This is gonna be the perfect time to film the outdoor update. Now, the reason we're not doing the harvest vlog today is um, because yesterday within the video, um, you know, we ended the f week nine flower update saying that we were gonna edit this video and jump right into the harvest vlog. Well, filming that video took roughly two days of filming. Um, I'm talking about the week nine flower update. The first day I filmed for about five hours, started editing and didn't like any take at all. And I was just like, oh, this is garbage. We're gonna redo it the next day. So we started it up the next day and filming took about eight hours and editing took about another five hours. Um, and in between those two days, I didn't sleep. So I was up for a total of like 36 hours um, before we actually got that video posted. So we crashed at like four in the morning and I woke up like four hours, five hours later, and I was just not in the mood to do a harvest today. It just, it consists of so much more than just harvesting. We have to, we have to make the, the vlog, we have to make cannabis emotion too. There's like so much that goes into it. I was just like not feeling it at all today. So that's why we're out here. We're making a little simpler update today. We're gonna be talking about our project here for the summertime, and then we're also gonna be touching on our Haze Extreme a little bit. Um, the last video we, uh, we touched on a Haze Extreme was the transplant video, and it's been roughly about a month since we've transplanted her now, and she's beginning to look a lot better. So before we get into that, let's talk about our Lone Seed. Um, it's not even a Lone Seed project. Why did I just say that? It's our Autoflower project. It's not Lone. We got, we got four little sisters together here chilling. So let me focus on the last girl down there. So as you can see, it's... They're pretty similar looking, except for that last girl down there. Let's go down to her really quick and see what's going on. All right, so they've been out here for 21 days. The strain that we are working with is Crop King Seeds Early Miss, the, uh, their feminized autoflower strain. Now, an autoflowering plant um, is derived from a ruderalis strain, which I believe originated somewhere in Russia. Um, so now these early mists have at least 10% ruderalis within the strain. So, if, um, like their dominance would be, I believe they're more indica dominant. So say they'd be like 60% indica. And now this is, this isn't what this, they are, but I'm just, for example, say they're 60% indica, 30% sativa, and then they would be 10% ruderalis. Um, so they need that ruderalis genetic for the plant to be considered an autoflowering genetic. And I guess the ruderalis strain just automatically flowers under any circumstance that it's given um, with any light conditions or anything. You don't need a 18-6 light cycle, a 24-hour light cycle, a 20 um, or four hour light cycle to, um, to veg these plants at all. I believe you can put them under whatever type of light cycle you want and they're just they're gonna veg out they're gonna do their thing and then when they're ready to flower they're gonna switch to flower themselves and you don't need to swap the light cycle now that's that's what I assume auto flowers out are right OGs I mean that's kind of what you get from um, just researching on the internet that's what you take away from that so we're gonna be kind of observing that I've never grown auto flowers at all in my life this is gonna be my first auto flower grow so I'm pretty excited about it and for feeding and for nutrients, we haven't given these plants anything. We have not pH balanced their water at all. Um, the only type of food source they have received um, would be beneficials from a tea that we brewed from Skunk Labs Horticulture, their um, root assist brew bags. We just went ahead and brewed some of that up, gave it 
the, to our little girls here, and we also gave some to our Hayes Extreme, but we'll get to that in a second here. So you just go ahead and take one more quick look. So you'll notice this one's marked. Now this one's marked time lapse because this is our actual project that we're working on for the summer here. Now, um, auto flowers have a 90 day cycle. So from seed to harvest, they're supposed to be 90 days. Um, so currently we're on day 21 and every single day we've been taking a picture of this girl here. And it's been a fun little project. Um, so as you notice, there's like, there's no computer set up, there's no tripod, there's no nothing. So we come out here every day and we try to like set up in the same position. And we come out at the same time and uh, rough, roughly around 6.15 p.m. And what we'll do is we'll set our shot. So we like to come out generally at the same time because of sun purposes, you know. We want that same look in our shot every single time to make it believable that it's a time lapse. Um, so what we're doing, come out at 6.15, and we have all of our settings that we, we've remembered. We're shooting on an ISO of 500 um, and an f-stop of between 7.1 and like 15, depending on the light in the sky. Like if it's a cloudy day, you'll need a lower f-stop. And then the shutter on 50. So we try to maintain those same settings and we just try to find exactly where we were at the uh, the previous day. Usually I'll just flip back in my pictures um, on the camera here, but we don't have that option since uh, we're recording right now. So I hope we can actually take a picture when we're, we're recording. That would be pretty cool. We can set the shot together and then actually take the time-lapse picture. So now we're just trying to get everything focused. This does not want to focus for me. I'm like right like in the range of focus right now. There we go. Okay. So that's looking about right. Our ISO for shooting video right now is on 100. So I don't know. We're going to need to bump that up. We're going to bump this up to 500. All right, so check this out. Now we're going to bring our f-stop up to... I'm liking that 9. That's at 10. Yeah, we're going to go with 10... That looks good. Okay, so now we're using this little stick down here as our marker. It's kind of like our placeholder. And we're going to go ahead and shoot our picture, make sure we're focused. And boom. Right on. We're still recording. That's awesome. So hopefully, like, the picture will just show up. I might have to insert it for the video. Um, but that's what we're doing every single day. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to drop back down our ISO for video purposes. Drop back down our f-stop to go 6.3 i like that um so yeah so we're shooting our time lapse series with this early miss here the interesting thing about this plant though is we planted them all at the same time and you'll notice that this plant actually the one we happened to pick for our specimen we picked this before the seeds even sprouted so it's kind of like a blind guess but you notice our stem is like a pig's tail it's a curly q and I did not do this. This was completely natural. I'm thinking that the seed germinated with like a hook in the taproot. And when we planted it, it kind of just got confused and kind of hooked and looped itself up. And like, I don't know, it just it sprouted a little funky, but she's looking good. Now you'll notice with the other girls here that they didn't have any problem sprouting up. Perfectly straight stock. Just had to be our luck that we got the Curly Q stock for our project. And I mean, these plants are looking really, really healthy. Now you'll see a little bit of stipling going on there. I found some um, some little green bugs that were kind of like white flies on these earlier today. And I pinched them off. But we have been, um, we've applied one um, application of pest spray on these girls. Um, it's our Monterey Garden Insect Spray with Spinosad mixed with um, some neem oil as a leaf polish. So that's what we've been using for our pest spray. Uh, for nutrients, like I said, our skunk lugs, horticulture, rudis of sprue bags, we brewed up one um, gallon of tea and we've been using that. And I think that pretty much covers, oh, no, no it doesn't. We gotta go back to this girl really quick. Um, because earlier when I was out here taking a look at our girls, I noticed that this little girl here just decided to show her pistols today. Let's see if we can turn her and find these beautiful white hairs. Where are you at? 
Okay, I think it's right in there. Yep. Right in there. Now you can barely see this because they're super small and they're just showing today. Right there on the left side, you can see that white hair coming out. And those are going to be our pistols. So all is looking good. I did kind of expect for our auto flowers to get a little bigger um, before they started flowering. I know auto flowers are generally a small plant. It's going to only be about eh, two feet or so um, come, you know, when we're ready to harvest. Auto flowers don't get that big, but I have seen auto flowers, um, just massive auto flowers. I'm following this one person uh, specifically on Instagram. Um, I think his name goes by like Mr. Sunshine Gardens or something. I know he's he's a California farmer up north and he's growing like auto flowers like bigger than our haze extreme. So I don't really know how that's working. It's just craziness. I've never seen an auto flower that big. So I expect these girls to get about two and a half feet tall or so. So yeah. All right. So exiting our auto flower project for a little bit. We're going over to our Haze Extreme here. We're going to talk about her for a little bit. So uh, since we've transplanted her, she's not received any type of feeding except for the, um, the tea that we brewed up. That's all I've given her. And when we did transplant her, we dumped a bunch of great white into her crater there to hopefully help spread her arms just a little bit better um, down there in the pot. Now she has recovered from her transplanting She's not like so tucked down anymore. She is still droopy a little bit and a little sad, but that's because she was extremely root bound. It's gonna take at least a month, probably a little longer than a month. We're gonna notice um, the recovery on this plant happen in the newer growth first. It's gonna take the older growth longer and some of the older growth might not even recover. It'll just be pruned off eventually, like these older leaves that are starting to yellow up. Um, we're going to leave them on there, obviously. They're important. We need them for the plant to kind of just repair itself and to, to continue to grow. But later on, depending on how big she gets, um, yeah, I mean, like, this growth up here, the reason we're getting one-bladed leaves is because our Haze Extreme is a re girl. She was brought out here during her second week into flowering because we had no more room inside. And so she had little baby, baby pre-flowers on her and all those baby pre-flowers kind of sprouted into new branches. Pretty awesome. So it's, it's just now beginning her, her veg cycle over, basically. We're gonna be harvesting this plant come late October, possibly even November. Um, out here in Southern California, we have temperatures that will sustain us until then. We really don't get frost. So this girl's gonna be able to like beast out of control. Now we haven't seen much canopy growth or recovery yet but the reason I know our haze extreme is recovering nicely is because she's gotten a whole lot bigger really quick oh geez let me let me see if I can lock the tripod in position here I have a picture on my Instagram of me and this plant and I had to crouch down now I don't have to crouch down at all she is taller than me and she's it's freaking huge look at this freaking beast of a plant Massive. So as soon as she recovers, she is going to be a full, beautiful tree. Can't wait to have like picnics under her and stuff. It's going to be a good time. Um, but this is how I really know that she's um, she's recovered from the transplant and the root boundness is because down here, her stalk, her trunk is so freaking massive. Look at this thing. I mean, I know. Okay, I've seen I've seen bigger trunks. OG. Let's, let's be honest. I've I've seen trunks the size of my freaking arm. But this is massive. This is probably the biggest trunk I've ever grown, and it's getting bigger by the days. I mean, this thing is just muscular, muscular stock. And the crazy part is, check this out, where we topped her, one side's receiving way more light than the other side. One branch is just steroids, one branch is just like really wimpy, kind of funny. So what we should be doing is we should be dragging this to just follow the sun's path in the sky. Sun's gonna be setting over this way. So realistically, we should turn this plant a little bit that way, but there's no way I'm moving that. I just did a slow water on this girl today. What we've been doing is we've been doing a drip feed for this girl. So we just pull the hose up over here, stick the hose into her, turn it on ever so slightly and let it stay there for about a half hour or so. Really lets the roots kind of absorb 
it's called a deep watering people and landscapers do it for like actual trees so since this is a tree i figured why not deep water this plant even though the roots obviously are stopped they're not going all the way into the ground figured why not try it out i've never done it before so been giving that a try so obviously we've not been ph balancing for our haze extreme out here and we actually have not been ph balancing for our auto flowers out here either fun little uh fact right there so i believe that's all we got for this update kind of just um explaining oh wait no that's what we got to talk about we have to get these shorter bamboo stakes out of here because look at this oh geez really quick where'd it go it's on the bigger branch it's over here over yep right up here so you'll notice that this bamboo stake was up against this right sitting just like this and that green tie was tied around it but I noticed that there's an indentation here our trunk from our cannabis plant has been growing around the bamboo it's almost been choking it off um, so we had to get that removed like ASAP and you'll notice down here if I can get the camera focused let's see where is it it's on the other side just around the corner here right up right up there there it is you'll notice that even the tie was digging into the plant which can totally cut off all of your food supply to this branch which is can be detrimental to your plant so I'm glad I caught that in time and that could also be why our uh, our leaves are still a little droopy on that branch at least oh my god Friggin whew, indigestion, I'm out of breath. Had some chicken fries from BK right before I filmed this. Oh my goodness, all right, so I'm pretty sure that kind of wraps up this update, OGs. Our Haze Extreme, oh yeah, bamboo sticks, that's what I was gonna talk about, god dang it. Um, so yeah, we have smaller bamboo stakes now, only sitting about this high, I think they're three foot bamboo stakes. We need to pull all of these out and we need to get eight foot bamboo stakes in here, even like 10 foot bamboo stakes, if they have 10, 10 feet bamboo stakes, because we need to reposition our branches. As you can see, like they're so long and lanky, they're just kind of drooping out. We need to like make sure they're held upright. Boom. Boom. She would be a lot happier. Like this branch, it's falling on top of this one, it needs to be upright. So that would also help her growth be corrected a little quicker. It's going to be interesting to see if the growth on her does completely repair or just our new growth starts coming in a lot nicer. So like I said, OGs, like three times now, I think that's the end of the episode, finally. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. And as always, OGs, subscribe. And be sure to stay tuned in for tomorrow's episode where we are going to be harvesting our videos and making a vlog out of it. Prop King Seeds. World-class cannabis seeds. Available online or in stores.